If you're one of those people that uses an iPhone but without iCloud, FaceTime, iMessage and all that jazz from Apple, then you might be a bit disappointed to hear tech reviewers talk about the new features in iOS 16 that rely on you being all in on the Apple ecosystem. But in fact, if you use Microsoft or Google services on an iPhone, there are still plenty of new features that you can also enjoy. So. Here are my top five new iOS 16 features for people who don't use Apple services. First feature that I want to highlight is called Live Activities. Now basically what this does is allow certain applications to give you real-time information about what's going on on the lock screen. So you don't have to unlock the phone to see that information and find out what's going on. So there are various examples of this. For instance, if you're playing back music, maybe a podcast, a video, or the timer. So let me show you how that works. So for instance, if I come into the clock application and set a timer, so I'm gonna set this timer for eight minutes. And then if I lock the phone and come to my lock screen, I have the timer counting down there and I can stop it or pause it. So that's a really handy feature. And as I said, that's just one of the many changes that Apple has made to the lock screen. So the next change is to do with the Photos application. Now there are two new features actually in the Photos application that I want to highlight. The first is duplicate photos. So if you've got lots of photos that have been doubled up for whatever reason in your photo library, you can use a new feature in the app that will actually find those duplicate photos and help you to delete them. Now it works by using not just the file name of the photo but also the file size to make sure that you're getting an accurate set of duplicates. So let me show you quickly how that works. So I'm going to open the Photos app here and you can see all of my recordings and various things there in the app. Now if I come to Albums and under Utilities here you see there's a new option now called Duplicates. I'm going to click on Duplicates and you can see all of these photos it's identifying as duplicates and I've got the opportunity to merge them. So I'm going to take this photo of the dog here and it tells you the date that it was sent as well. So I got this photo probably via WhatsApp once on the 26th of September and then again on the 28th. It's actually the same photograph. So I'm going to click Merge and basically what it really does is of course just delete one of those items. And there we're done. That's now removed from the list. If I want to delete all of the duplicates that have been identified, I just click basically select, select all, and then I've got the option at the bottom there to delete all of those duplicate photographs in one go. The second feature that I want to talk about in the Photos app is the ability to select text live. It's called live text. So for instance, you take a photograph and maybe you want to look up some information based on the text in that photograph. Using artificial intelligence, the application is now able to identify that text and allow you to select it as if it was something that you'd written in Word or you know something like that. So for instance, let's take this photograph that you can see now. If I expand this image, I'm going to come up and just click and hold on the screen and you can see it's identified that text and I've got the option to copy it, to look it up, to translate. Let's see if it can translate it. And there you can see it's translated it from German into English. So that's also another really useful feature, especially when you're out and about. Now, at number three on my list is the ability to display a Wi-Fi password. So how many times have you been asked, what is the password for this network? Maybe it's your own home network, or maybe you're in a cafe and you know what the password is because the waiter's told you, but somebody's come and asked you, do you know what the Wi-Fi password is? As it stood in, I iOS, you couldn't actually see Wi-Fi passwords before. But now if you come into the settings app and come to Wi-Fi and you click on a Wi-Fi network that you're connected to, all you have to do is come down to the password field, click and hold, 
and then it will ask you to verify yourself via Touch ID or whatever you've got set up. And then you can either just see that password or you can even copy it out and send it to somebody. Now, number two on my list is really about productivity. And this is the improved focus mode. Now, there are some things connected with focus mode and the lock screen, which I'm gonna talk about in the next point. So the main new feature here with focus mode is focus filters. And what this allows you to do with compatible applications is to basically set what information you're going to see within that application depending on the focus mode that is currently set. So for instance, if you've got a focus mode that is set to personal, which you use at weekends, you could set it up so that Outlook will only show you personal emails, so emails from your personal accounts, and it will block everything from your work email accounts until Monday morning. So let me show you how that works. So if I come into the settings app and I find, let's say, focus, and we click on the focus option there. And I've got several different focus modes set up here. Now I've got one here that's called personal. And if I come down here to focus filters at the bottom, you can see that I've added Outlook as a focus filter. Now, unfortunately, let's add a new filter. You can see from the list of filters here that there are not many applications that are actually compatible with this at the moment. And out of the Microsoft applications, Outlook is the only one. Now that kind of makes sense because it's the only application, as far as I'm aware, that really allows you to receive messages and notifications from multiple accounts at the same time, at least as it stands right now. Teams doesn't allow you to do that, of course. So I've already added a uh, focus filter for Outlook. Now, when you go through this process, uh, let me just come back here. Uh, maybe I'll delete the filter and we'll add it back in. So you go to add filter. So I'm going to add it here. And you can see now I've got the option to add Outlook. So I'm gonna add Outlook and I'm gonna add it to my personal accounts. And I'm gonna say add. Now this only works because I've already got this set up in Outlook. So if I come and open Outlook here and I'm gonna to go to my settings, open it here. And if I come down to the bottom here in settings, you can see there's an option called focus profiles and I've got two set up, work and personal. So let's have a look at the one for personal. And you can see here that basically I have excluded my work email for when the personal focus mode is activated. So of course the idea behind all of this is really to help you have a better work-life balance to make sure that when you're you know, focusing on personal stuff, you're not being bothered by work and of course maybe vice versa, if that's how you want to set it up. So I think this is a great improvement to the focus mode feature in iOS 16. Now last and certainly the best feature and the best thing about the iOS 16 update is the ability to personalize the lock screen. Now, this is something, of course, that's been available in Android, uh, you know, for probably since the very beginning. But, you know, here Apple have basically given you to customize the lock screen to a certain extent, but it's very simple. So basically you can add any number of lock screens that you want. And in order to customize a lock screen, all you have to do is click and hold, and then it will give you the option to customize. Now you can add your own wallpapers to the lock screen and Apple will even use artificial intelligence to suggest which photos you have in your photo library are likely gonna be best suited to a lock screen. And you can also customize it. So for instance, you see here, there are various things that you can change. There's the option to add widgets under the time. Now, the only thing with the widgets at the moment is that there's a very limited set of applications that uh, you can add here underneath the clock on the lock screen. And it's mainly Apple applications at this stage. Outlook is missing, for instance. Maybe that's something that Microsoft will change in the future. So although I can add an Outlook widget to my home screen, as you've seen, at the moment I can't add an Outlook widget to the lock screen. But I think that will change as we go forward and we'll see more widgets uh, that are specifically designed to be added to the lock screen. As I said, you can really add as many lock screens as you want, but the great thing is that you can associate 
associate these lock screens with focus modes. So if there are certain things that you don't want to see on the lock screen, for instance, while you're working, then you can have a lock screen that's specifically designed for work. Uh, or maybe there are things that you do want to see, of course, you just customize it however you like. Uh, there's also a section above the clock where there are various things you can put in there. Uh, of course, this is like a long, thin widget that sits above there. So you've got the date by default, but you can add in, I don't know, the calendar, obviously an Apple calendar, not Outlook calendar, the clock and Facebook birthdays, the fitness app, uh, stock information. You can add to that strip along the top. Now, another thing that you can do with the new ability to customize the uh, lock screen is you can set it up as a wallpaper pair, the image that you select for the lock screen. And what this does is kind of add a color to the home screen uh, wallpaper that is similar to the lock screen you know, picture that you've chosen or the one that Apple's automatically chosen. And that just gives you a nice consistency through the experience that matches the lock screen image that you've chosen. And that's quite a nice touch. Something else that's a really nice touch, if you don't have any widgets underneath the clock selected, then you can select an image, maybe an image of yourself, for instance, and it will kind of do a nice layered effect with the time and you know the subject of that image, if it can detect that. And that's also another really nice touch. And of course, Apple really excels at all, you know, all this kind of fit and finish and polish to the operating system, you know, if you're listening Microsoft. So that's my top feature, that ability to customize the lock screen. But I just want to give you one more bonus and that's the weather app. Now, I know this may not seem very exciting, but in the weather app now, you can actually see the forecast for the individual days. And to think that you couldn't do this before was absolutely crazy. So if I come and click on a particular day, I can actually see the forecast in detail now for that day. Of course, you could always download a third party weather app for iOS, but actually the built-in one was the one that I wanted. And it was really frustrating that it didn't offer that feature. There's also the ability to turn on severe weather notifications, you know, if you live in an area where that's likely to be a problem. But, you know, I think that while, of course, this is definitely not a revolution with iOS, the ability to customize it and to tie it in with the focus mode and the focus filters, you know, I think these are really great changes to iOS, regardless of whether you're using Apple services and products on the iPhone, now everybody can enjoy these features. I just really hope that we're going to see more third party widgets come for the lock screen customization. But that's it from me today. If you found this video useful, then please like and subscribe. And I'm going to leave you with another video that you might find interesting about the lockdown mode in iOS 16, which can help you to stay more secure. But that's it from me today, and I'll see you next time.